remote, inaccessible, and inhospitable. Deserts are some of the most difficult places to survive on Earth. The combination of extreme temperatures, extreme aridity, and the lack of vegetation, deserts are extreme environments. Distributed among all seven continents, they cover more than one-fifth of the world's total land surface. Subtropical deserts, the picture-perfect sand dune-filled landscapes, make up only one-tenth of desert regions around the world. The other 90% consists of coastal, rain shadow, interior, and polar deserts. Desert means a lot of different things and doesn't rely on temperatures. Anywhere on our planet that gets less than 10 inches of rain a year, doesn't matter how hot or cold it is, a desert is purely defined by how much precipitation they're getting, or in this case, how much they're not. Visualize a desert. What is the first place that comes to mind? When you think of desert, you're almost certainly thinking of the Sahara with the sand dunes, the sandscapes. They're like 1.57 septillion grains of sand. Located on the African continent, part of the vast Tropic of Cancer desert belt, the Sahara covers a staggering 3.5 million square miles. The Sahara is the largest hot desert in the world. It takes up 31% of the African continent. And what I mean by hot desert is that its temperatures can rise over 100 degrees, but then it can be as cool as 25 degrees at night. It's an extremely, extremely harsh, harsh environment. The reason for the vast temperature swings there's no clouds to keep it in and form that warm blanket. So once the sun goes away and sets, all of the heat that was generated here at the um, surface level just goes up and dissipates in the atmosphere. The birth of the harsh landscape dates back 4.6 million years, when the Tethys Sea, the ancient forerunner of the Mediterranean, slowly shrivels. The progression exposes more land, moisture slows to a crawl, and the rainless region transforms into the Sahara. The Sahara lies in a unique location underneath two global circulation patterns. The Hadley cell is the one circulating to the south, and the Farrell cell is the one circulating to the north. At the intersection of these two global circulations, you actually have a lot of sinking air. That sinking air causes warming of the atmosphere you end up with very warm, dry conditions at the surface. That's why we see typically very few clouds and little rainfall. While science tells us that less than four inches of rain falls here a year, there is a mystery that confounds geologists and archaeologists for decades. A strange 100 million year old structure peeks out from the sea of sand, the mysterious eye of the Sahara, a geological marvel measuring 30 miles across. For thousands of years, only a few nomadic tribes knew of its existence. Then, in June 1965... Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. A NASA astronaut aboard the Gemini 4 space mission conducts the first American spacewalk. We just had word from Houston. We're ready to have you get out whenever you're ready. Okay, we've got to go now. And spots what appears to be an enormous crater in the Sahara Desert. It becomes known as the Eye of the Sahara, or the Recot structure. The structure is so huge and perfectly round some speculate it has to be man-made. You know, people are fascinated and it sparks debate. You know, could this be a lost Atlantis? Others believe the eye is an impact crater of extraterrestrial origins. But both ideas are ruled out as geologists unlock another theory. The inside of it is magmatic in nature, and so you can imagine that if you have a magma structure that's forming and it's causing the crust above it to um, basically dome outwards. Rocks here date to a time when volcanic activity raised the entire area. Then layer upon layer of sand, dust, and mud are deposited on the dome. Eventually, volcanic activity slows down. The dome collapses on itself, and weather erodes away the layers. 
creating a distinct appearance. You can think of it um, kind of like tree rings in a sense that, you know, you have a, a ball in the earth that, and the, the, there's layers around it. And as the, the surface of the earth gets eroded around and exposes it, you get to see those rings. While scientists believe they have solved the mystery above ground, beneath the shifting Saharan sands lie hidden secrets to a world from the distant past. What's cool about the Sahara is that it's a desert now, but in the past, it was a lush, um, tropical place. Incredibly, just 6,000 years ago, the world's largest hot desert is fertile and full of life. At one point, the Saharan Desert was a lush landscape. It got beautiful, moist air that came in and provided trees and vegetation and animals. While humans leave evidence in ancient rock art of a green Sahara where giraffes, gazelles, and elephants roam wild, scientific proof is found buried deep below the surface in layers of sediment. We look at these lake sediments and marine sediments. They are telling us exactly the same thing. Even it has been green with footprints of different vegetations and life forms, and then it has completely changed, and then the, uh, it has taken shape like, like we know today. But what causes this swing from sandy desert to lush grassland and back again? The Earth's changing axis unlocks the mystery. The Earth is a sphere, but its mass isn't evenly distributed. And as a result, you know, the Earth is tilted, but there's a slight little wobble to it as it's moving around. But that wobble, um, you know, happens over thousands of years. The Earth's axis wobbles a little bit between about 22 and 24 degrees. And the cause of this wobble is gravitational forces from other objects in the solar system. These little changes can affect weather patterns. The wobble causes a shift in the monsoon winds that bring heavy rain. When the Sahara is green, they are further north. Instead of the Sahara being this dry desert, it's actually a beautiful area with lots of water, lots of life, lots of plants, lots of greenery. But another wobble moves the wind and rain south. When it gets closer to the 24 degree mark, the sun becomes more overhead on the northern hemisphere, so more direct sunlight. When this happens, your drier landscapes begin to encroach northward. When weather patterns start to shift, you get areas that were once moist and wet becoming dry, and the Sahara is an excellent example of that. But will the Sahara turn green again? It takes tens of thousands of years for it to go just one direction and another tens of thousands of years to go back into the other. So even though the Sahara had this beautiful life in the past, and it will probably have it again in the future, we're not gonna be here to see it. <laughs>